Hey guys, Dustin Dolby here. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, you won't regret it. Today I'm gonna to run you through an easy workflow for approaching vodka photography, just classic vodka imagery. A big passion of mine. We kept it simple today with a couple speed lights because a shot like this really only takes a couple simple ingredients to begin to wake up a simple bottle of vodka. You wanna give it a nice backlight, which gives a see-through substance some volume, which can look attractive in an ad. And then obviously we wanna flatter the labels. So if you have any other questions or any questions about my gear, I'll try to link most of it below in the description. Just leave them below. I'll get back to you probably within 24 hours. So we've begun by just putting our bottle on a small shooting surface. That'll give us a lot of control and we raised it to a height that'll just be comfortable to work at, which is important. We slid in a sheet of gloss acrylic. I'll link that below as well. And then we brought out a roll of Savage Transient Plastic as our background material. This will just fall beautifully behind our bottle and pretty much act as a beautiful alternative to a white wall. And this is pretty much the entirety of what's going on here. So we'll just start by bringing out a single speed light here. It's gonna be a Yongnuo 563, pretty classic speed light. We'll bring this behind our diffuser and that'll give us a really reliable system to start giving the bottle a little bit of character. And then where we place our light pretty much determines how the volume is gonna look in the bottle. And I'll kind of go for something symmetrical because I think that suits the genre of classic vodka photography. And you see that's pretty smooth diffusion for a bare light and that's refracted of course in our bottle. And you see our main label is actually misaligned to our bottom label. I've centered us up here relative to the back etching because that is kind of unforgiving and that's something you run into when you're shooting retail bottles. So I'll just have to make a small rotation at the end for our top label, but just be aware those will be misaligned for the time being. We're getting a nice diffusion here. It's giving the bottle character shadows towards the sides of the bottle kind of convey volume and start to give the vodka some sense of class. It kind of looks nice. It looks like you want to drink it. And this is without any front light so far. Before we go ahead and modify our light, why don't we just start with another bare speed light. So this is our second and final light and I'll just shoot this right at the bottle and hopefully we can get an idea of at least the material finish. And we'll start, you know, seeing that label pop off the background. I know it's bothersome to see it off center, but a bare flash, it does render our label brightly. You know, it contains elements of what we're looking for, but it does fall short on some of the metallic finishes, which I'm sure you can see, and that could really wake the bottle up if we respected those a little bit more. Notice the light kind of killed some of the contrast on the background. To avoid spill like that, you can use a black card to flag the light from the background. And I do that often when I shoot with speed lights, just so the background can retain its contrast, which you kind of want to preserve and it helps blend layers together with blending modes as well. So I'm actually going to light each label separately and I'll explain why I do that in a second. But let me just show you the three quick exposures I would take to really flatter this label. I'll start with the speed light with the black card combo we just talked about. And just right above our label, I'm not even worried about getting in the way of anything. Try to blast it right at that bottom label. Boom, so there's the bottom label. And we can comp that in no problem. Now we're free to rotate our bottle. You also notice in this exposure, we're not affecting the background contrast at all. So I'm gonna try to keep the top of our bottle super clean. And to do that, I'll bring in one of these really cheap diffusers. I'll link them below as well. You could use something nicer like the Savage Translume, but it'll just give the top a really clean look. This is where a two second remote will really come in handy. and trying to keep that as central as possible. Boom, there's a little cap light. And I like how that is very soft just because of the diffuser. And you get some nice ridge highlights there. So I just rotated our bottle. Now the main label is much more respectable. So this will be our main shot. We'll bring in the other two accents, lickety split, no problem in Photoshop. So watch what I'm going to do with this. It's literally a piece of paper. Forgive me, it's two pieces of paper taped together with a notch cut out so we can push it into the bottle. And then if approached from above like before, even with the bare speed light. Can you begin to see it? Let's zoom in here a little. It's like the Polar Express, you got to believe. Can you begin to see the kind of magic that occurs inside? It's the metallic finish is really waking up for the first time. And this is like 70% coverage. Maybe we could call that. If you wanted 100% coverage, a front diffuser or shooting through a diffuser would be a great idea, even with a hole cut through it. Having said that, watch, we can compress a shape of a wraparound diffuser and probably get more near like 80 or 85% coverage. Then at that point, 
you flattered the label just like the other labels, then you just have a few small areas to patch up, and I'd be happy to show you how to do that. Great, so we can tie all those exposures together in Photoshop. It'll be no problem to stitch something together because they were all consistent. They weren't moving, which would give us an easy time getting a nice, sharp, glossy result. If you want to explore your Photoshop skill set more, I will include the whole edit at the end of this video. But let me tell you quickly about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They do offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative curious people. Class topics include photography, which I'm a fan of, product rendering, retouching, freelancing, you know, stuff we enjoy here. I've been exploring food photography content like this class by Tabitha Park, how to capture bright and airy pancakes. It did not disappoint. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to, you know, in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. So you can click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, guys, so here we go. We're inside of Photoshop and I did crop our perspective a little bit just to get more narrow. So I have these two folders and the first rotation is the cap and the bottom light I'm looking for. And then we rotated the bottle and took these exposures and we have backlights as well. I'm gonna start with our first rotation and just show you how I build up my base bottle relatively quickly. So this bottle's super clean, the backlit one, because there's no random arbitrary highlights in it. So if we mask shots in like this, we'll get a really clean result. I'll hold Alt and click this layer mask button, which will give it a black mask by default, omitting it. I'll zoom in and then with a white brush with a bit of feather, I'll paint that in and it'll be super clean and we'll make it more legible in a moment. I'll start by hitting X though, just to change my foreground color over here to black. And that'll let me omit the layer as well from anywhere it's spilt. I wanna retain my contrast, which is why I'm masking it in like this in the first place. So let's put lighten mode, which will help us out here because we're gonna put a curves layer. Alt and click that to clip these layers together. So it'll only affect the bottom label. And then I'm gonna crispen it up, which will make it more legible and it'll only affect this layer because it's on lighten mode, so that won't mess up our background of vodka. So that's nice, we might adjust it more as we go, but we will move on to the cap. So the cap looks nice and beautiful. You could use the magnetic lasso tool, which would give us a pretty quick you know, exterior selection here, or we could use the polygonal lasso tool like I did, but I prepared our selections just so this isn't a 50 minute tutorial. So once you have a selection of your cap active, either way, you just click this button again to mask it, and it's gonna look strange at first, but what I'm gonna do is make a new layer above that, Alt and click it, so once again, this layer is clipped, and then I'll bring out a black brush, and I'll lower my flow to like 33%, and I will just darken up the edges of this bottle, which will help it sit in a kind of more contrasty atmosphere easier. I can even do the top a subtle amount, maybe really subtle, and that'll just help it sit better. So we have our cap, we have our bottom label, and that's all we needed from this rotation. So now we can move on to our final rotation and then just bring those in quickly at the end. So let's see what we can do with this folder. So these top two layers, I'm gonna put in a group and I will call it bright. I'm gonna put it on light mode and I'm gonna put both the layers as well on light mode, just so the, the lightest data is coming through the best of both of them and then I'll patch up anything in between. But first, let's brighten up the word here, the brand name. It's usually a good idea. Bring a selective color. And this will be an intense version, but feel free to pull it back. I'm just gonna crank all the selective color white values to the left, then invert the mask, control I. And with B to bring out a white brush, I can paint that in here. And I won't do it full-fledged because that's pretty heavy. But I'll start getting it nice and crisp and you know, coming off the background. Now you can make a selection of these little areas we missed with a, you know, a color grabber. You could use the magnetic lasso tool again, it's decent. Or you could use the polygonal lasso tool, which I did, and just grab these areas. There's just four spots. And again, I just prepared that selection. So I'll grab that. And what I would do once I made that is just make a new layer above everything. And then we can just have some fun painting colors in. So we'll hit I to bring out the eyedropper and grab a nearby color. Hit B to bring up my brush. And I'll just start probably with a full flow, painting it in some areas. 
and I'll grab a new sample for each area that I kind of assist. And it's okay to have a dark stripe near the middle of your bottle because a lot of people light stuff from the sides and that's sort of a natural side effect anyway. But if you can patch it up, I don't mind doing this. It's only a couple of minutes to do it. Okay, so that got us off to a start and we can improve that as we go and brighten it and sort of bring out the shine to it. All right, let's throw this all together. So it starts with the hue saturation effect and we're just gonna go to the blue channel and I do this anyways, even if I wasn't compositing because you see there's some blue and I'll just remove that just so we have a neutral vodka image. Now I'll hold alt and click the inverted mask button from our top layer because really what I wanna do is just blend it into our otherwise flattering bottle. So what I'm gonna do is get out a white brush just like before, just paint in these nice perfect labels, which is fantastic. And these ones are straightened, of course, because we measured them up in camera. And there may be odd highlights like this down here, but that's no problem, really. We can take care of that. Very well. And then we can re reverse the brushes. So I have a black brush in the foreground if you want to paint the effect back to have more drama on the side of the bottle. And you may have to especially mask an area that's being a little tricky, but it should otherwise blend in pretty seamlessly. And then I'll just make a quick layer above it, a curves layer, and I'll clip that again with Alt and clicking, and then I'll pull that down just in case it was threatening the contrast anywhere, just to play it on the safe side. Now there's a few small patches here to touch up and I do want to rotate the whole text maybe you know a half a degree to the left below the brand name because it's looking a little crooked. But I included that in our final image so let me just show you how I would complete this render. And if you have any questions about that just leave them below. Now we could edit a photo like our original in this space just by blurring these plexiglass edge lines and kind of making that euphoric space for the bottle to sit in. But I'm going to do it digitally which is a bit easier if you don't mind selecting your bottle. So I'm going to control G to group all my layers and I've already selected our bottle. And again, I did that with the polygonal lasso tool. And then I'm going to hit this masking button to kind of cut it out like it's a PNG. So I'll make a new layer behind that. And I'm going to use a gray, a kind of medium gray. And it's going to look bad to begin with. But if we make a new layer above that, let's go to image mode, 16 bit per channel, just so we avoid any banding issues and you'll, be familiar with that if you watched our last episode. Let's get white in our foreground. And with a radial gradient, I'm going to do a pretty far-reaching gradient. And that didn't disappoint. I like that. Maybe I'll also use the gray color with a linear gradient foreground to transparent to kind of give the bottom some darkness for it to sit in. And then we can brighten the bottle in certain areas if we want with a curves adjustment by curving up. Control I the mask, and then a white radial gradient makes a great way to skirt some light into areas of the bottle you want to fix, or just make it look more pronounced. Now I'm just going to merge absolutely everything, even my paths that I saved, and just show you how if you spent some time with this image, you have to retouch a lot of little things, and some of it could have been prevented by cleaning, but a lot of natural little things are going to happen in the image. And there's immediately going to be a spectrum. You're going to have to decide to what degree you want to clean the image. Because you can obsess and go crazy and try to get rid of all these little lines and everything. And then, of course, get rid of them below as well. But main things you'll look out for are the serial number, of course. And the patch tool works good for getting local things like this. And, you know, more blemishes out and more things that I paid more attention in our final version to retouching here or there. So like I said, it's up to you to decide how long you want to pay attention to those little things and just make them smooth and nice. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you for checking out Workflow. Leave me comments below. I always read them. And you got to join the Facebook group if you haven't, if you want to learn this stuff every day, because it's a great way to kind of accelerate your education. And I love having you guys around. And I'll catch you next time here on Workflow, guys. Have a good one.